One of the things that's a problem in a lot of shops is keeping up with all of the different service tickets and jobs that need to be done, who needs to do them, when they're going to do them, priority customers getting mixed in with regular customers and all of the different things that go along with it. So in this video, what we're going to do is cover the service list, how it works and, and some of the features that are on it. And so I'm going to go right now, I'm in invoicing service tickets and we're just going to come down here to the service list. Now, by default, when you first open this, you're going to be looking at this as if you were the mechanic. Um, it'll be looking at my tickets, which are the things that have been scheduled for me to go work on. So if you're the service writer, it's probably always going to be blank. But if you also happen to work on units, you can assign yourself units as well. Now, the, the primary place we're going to be is going to be here on the all customer tickets and internal tickets. We'll start with internal tickets. The internal ticket list is broken down based on whether we're looking at all job types. We only want to look at setup, repair, installation, PDI, or F&I. Um, so it lets me drill in and only look at the specific tickets that are in this section that I want to try to get done. For example, to try to get all the units set up as quickly as possible, uh, where we might need to do some repair on something, we can take a look at that. Um, the, along the same lines, we have the ability to tell it to show us only the jobs that are tagged as warranty. Um, we also can come down here and use the same features that you'll see here when we're viewing all customer tickets. I can look at things that have parts on order, things that are ready for the mechanic to go pick up, uh, you know, pick up the parts and start working on the unit, and you know, the, the other various uh, job status codes that we actually have. Um, you can also narrow down by the type of unit, by the mechanic that you've already assigned to the job, and so forth. Now, if I go over here to all customer tickets, I, you'll notice I have all of the same options. I don't have to choose by the job type, but I still have the ability to view by mechanic, view by unit types, the schedule. Um, I can also tell it I only want to look at things that we promised the customers we would have done by a certain date so we don't miss those and forget to do them. Um, and then in addition, we can tell it job status codes just like we did on the internals. So the service list as a whole is really a, a very powerful organizational tool to help me not only keep up with the, the items that I've got to do, but kind of group them in, in areas that help me to manage them better. Now, when we start using the service list, there's a few features that we need to be aware of. One is we can actually schedule the mechanics work from the screen. Um, there's other videos to actually show you how to do that, but you basically uh, click the calendar here and pull up the service schedule, choose the time slot and person you want to, to do the work, and then the system will go and schedule everything out for you for that particular job. Um, so you can schedule the work from here. This icon here will actually allow you to open up the service ticket and view it in line with the service list. So when I close this, I'll, I'm actually still on the service list. And you'll also notice here that we have uh, scheduled dates and reference numbers, the tag numbers that go on the service tickets, who they're assigned to and, and so forth. Now, while we're talking about the, the schedule, just another uh, mention of the fact that you don't really uh, care too much when you're working with a service list. You don't really care too much about these time slots. There's no way you're going to schedule for a mechanic to work on something at 10 o'clock. The reason that we put those time slots there is to help out with the schedule incoming uh, because we also support the ability to, to keep up with that stuff. And it actually merges the two of those together so that you can see jobs that are coming in where the mechanic is, or the customer's bringing the job in, maybe bringing a tire in to get it fixed. Um, you can schedule the mechanic at 930 to start working on that particular thing so that you know not to schedule him for something else. So the time slots are useful for that purpose, but for the purpose of scheduling a mechanic to work on something, just treat them as open slots. So just ignore the time and just treat it as any other slot. And I want him to work on this and then I want him to work on something else and not really care about what time it is that happens to be on the schedule for that thing. Um, and you'll notice that scheduling current and things that are hooked to jobs, they all have different color codes to kind of help you visually depict what it is that you're looking at when you open this, this control up. So usually most of the, the shops that are using the service department, they only schedule one or two days in advance. They don't try to schedule out a whole week's worth of work because if you do that, you're really going to spend the majority of your time rescheduling everything because nothing ever works out the way that you wish it did. So we really recommend, you know, using the service list to organize everything and then 
using the the scheduler just on a one to two day uh, cycle to to try to keep things you know keep the mechanics busy and make sure that they've always got something on their plate to work on.